Um, well, my name is Helen Miles, as you just heard, and I'm really pleased to be here to talk about my mosaic journey and the influences on my work. Um, sorry, I have to work out this computer. Right. Um, I started making mosaics after moving to Greece in 2001. I was uh, sitting on a beach, sifting through pebbles, and I had an epiphany moment when I realized that this is what I wanted to do, and I never looked back. Um, I was living in Thessaloniki at the time, which is a UNESCO city famous for its Byzantine mosaics, and I sought out a master craftsman who specialized in uh, Byzantine icons. Um, and he taught me everything he knew. Um, everything was in reverse, and um, it was all cast, and he used ti tiny tesserae. And the more I looked at, and um, the more I made mosaics, the more I wanted to look at mosaics, and living in Thessaloniki allowed me to explore the area near me, and this is from the palace of Pella, which is um, Alexander the Great's father, and it dates from 400 BC. And, um, and in fact, wherever you are in Greece, you stumble across mosaics. And this we discovered on a long car journey, a hot day with the children. We stopped at a closed archaeological site, and the children leapt over, leapt over the wall and um, shouted mosaics. And it turned out to be the ancient city of Nicopolis, which was founded in 31 BC, uh, AD. Sorry. And this illustrates why I love mosaics and why I can't have enough of them. This comes from Ereclia Lincentis. And it, oh, sorry, we're on the wrong, I think we're, I think I went forward, so I need to go to that one. Yep. Okay, uh, it comes from Ereclia Lincentis and it dates from the sixth century. And it's the, it's everything about it I love. I love the color, I love the design, I love the liveliness of it. I love the joy and exuberance that it exudes from, from this mosaic and many other ancient mosaics. And in, with my own mosaics, I'm not trying to copy the ancients, but I'm trying to keep some of the essence of what I've just told you about, about the joy. And I'm, I'm fascinated in the, um, with andamento. I love andamento. I love the slow movement, uh, the smooth movement that andamento creates. So this is actually um, sort of il illustrates why I love Andamento. As you can see, the design is very simple. There's very little um, going on in the mosaic, but the Andamento is doing, doing the work, and Andamento is what is making it, I hope, um, interesting. And another reason I love uh, mosaics is because in Greece I have access to the most wonderful uh, marbles and stones, so there's a wonderful range of, of colors, and the, this um, slide just illustrates how kind of rich and intense the colors can be in natural stone. Um, and right from the beginning, right from when I first started making mosaics, I was determined to make money from them. Um, and one of the things I do is make mosaics for special occasions. And this was the first special occasion mosaic I made, which was for my nephew for a wedding. And those are buildings which are important to him and, and his wife. Um, this is another wedding mosaic. Um, and it illustrates how I take different elements from ancient mosaics and adapt them for my own purposes. So any of you who know who the Loham mosaic in Somerset will know the, the trees on either side of the embracing couple. So I've just adapted those trees and made it into a bower for the couple here. Uh, and this shows the, the design process. This re relates back to the previous mosaic. Um, so often I'll have a particular ancient mosaic in mind when, mind when I first start working. And, and with the wedding mosaic, I wanted to keep the formality of the couple holding things that um, are representative or important to them. And here again is, is uh, an example of how I like to jiggle around or play with ancient mosaics. And a lot of you will know this motif, which is uh, the debris from a Roman feast. And here I've just used the debris from the client's life. So the, the pen, for example, represents her life as a writer. 
Um, and sometimes I do very little adaption. Uh, the client here wanted a mosaic of her very scary uh, parson, Jack Russell, who was called Petro. And so I based it on the Roman threshold mosaic, and uh, so that says in Latin, uh, beware of Pedro. And I find, um, even when I'm not actually basing my mosaics or thinking about ancient mosaics, they just come to me. So I mean, one of the things I love about ancient mosaics is the, the quirky humour of them. Uh, and I think, well, I hope that this gives you some idea of how it just comes out even when I'm not intending it to. Uh, and I trained, as I said, in the reverse method, and everything was cast in stone and very heavy. Uh, and I did that for about three or four years, very intensively. Um, but now I work only in direct and much prefer it. I love being able to see what I, I'm doing, basically. And I like the flexibility. Um, and so here's an example of how, I'm, uh, for example, I use mesh. So on the left, I, I'm making a garden urn, and I've made the fish separately at, uh, because they're fiddly, and, and I have to put them in an awkward spot, and then applied them to the sides of this urn before doing the, the, the simple laying of the tesserae. Uh, and another thing I love about ancient mosaics is the, the collaborative aspect of them. The, the, higgledy pigglediness the, the randomness, the sense of many people at work pushing the, the tesserae into the mortar. Um, and I was very lucky, and, and I'm hoping to, to work more with community mosaics. And I was very lucky recently to go to Chicago, uh, thanks to a Creative Scotland grant, and uh, do a week with Gary Drossel uh, with his um, large scale, learning his large scale mosaic techniques and I hope to take my practice forward in that way. Thank you very much. Thank you.